Hello everyone, Cinter here, and welcome to the next part of Let's Make a Game Astro Collision. And what the big thing that I've done this week, uh, again, I haven't really done a whole lot over here because my focus has been on getting this file filled out. So as a reminder, uh, weapons. So I've gone through and I have finished working on weapon damage formulas uh, in the sense that I have gotten something in for every weapon now. And uh, I have kind of finished getting all that prepared. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of just scroll through. It's I think it's easier to go over in this file and kind of describe what's going on. Uh, things like sword and dagger are in flail, uh, axe. Most of these are the same. Uh, the whip is the same. Staff, I actually came in here and I added some additional plus damage to it. One of the things that I realized looking through a lot of my caster weapons is that most of them are kind of weak, uh, especially early on. You would get, say, the staff, and it would be dealing half the damage of a sword. Um, things like that. And a lot of that is because, I mean, if we go back up here to the sword, you'll notice that the sword has, like, a plus 19 thrown in here, and there's a plus 20 and a plus 40. There's, like, random pluses in this formula. I don't remember the details of making this one. You can go back to a very early episode where I, where I went over the incredible mathematical rigor of creating this thing um but the the basic point is if you go to a lot of these physical weapons what you'll see and if i go over that's not the right document uh over here uh where i'm looking over to the side where these things are you'll notice that um a lot of the physical weapons kind of have an average in those 60 to 70 range so like sword is 70 flail is 63 axe is pretty high at 99 um, these are at the sort of 2020 levels for things. Uh, but you kind of have that sort of range going on, or you have things like, say, the uh, the dagger, which it hits twice, so I actually have a times two in its average. Or the, uh, the claws have a times two in its average. Uh, plus the claws have plus 60% accuracy, so they're on average going to be dealing about 1.3 times as much damage as this anyway. Uh, so that's that's boosted up from that as well. So uh, whereas like the mace here, which looks extraordinarily high, is actually doing approximately uh, like 75% of that damage on average. Um, so the basic point is a lot of these caster weapons uh, were... Ooh, that's looking real loud right now for you. Let me turn that down some. Uh, a lot of these caster weapons were extremely underwhelming. And part of the problem with that is, is I don't want you to feel like you have to use a spell on every enemy or, or every turn. I want attacking to feel like a reasonable option on a caster. And for that to happen, I needed the caster weapons to actually deal damage. Uh, and they just they were underwhelming in that regard. So uh, I went through and I modified uh, a couple of them to have additional plus damage on them. Um, so let's see, bow uh, was the same, crossbow was the same, flintlock I have modified. Uh, so flintlock was originally just uh, some flat damage, and then the critical would scale with your level. So the higher level you were, the stronger your criticals were. Uh, so basically this was a weapon about getting critical hits, and that would make it deal a lot more. Now I've added this bit of math to it. Uh, so what this is going to do is this is just going to scale the damage of the weapon up or down based upon what your relative strength plus dexterity is to your opponent's strength plus dexterity. This kind of is the general concept that I've gone with the firearms. Uh, flintlock cares about both stats. Shotgun cares about strength. Rifle cares about dexterity. Just to give a little bit more play to the values. Uh, this will mean as you get higher level, these will hit weaker enemies even harder. Uh, but they're not going to be particularly effective against enemies that are super, uh, are like dramatically more powerful than you. Um, and that's just kind of works as a little bit of a factor to kind of balance them a bit, uh, because they were extremely powerful. Um, particularly the rifle, I, I remember tearing through a bunch of enemies. So uh, I did that modification to the flintlock here, and you'll see the shotgun and the rifles we get further down. Claws, gloves, these are the same as they have been. Uh, again, this is like for the gloves, set damage values plus some amount of your TP. I added on uh, the spear kind of working as kind of an average of your physical attack stats. The mace just has a really high amount of damage. Uh, 70 plus your strength, and 80 plus two times the sum of your strength and dexterity. Like, this is a lot of potential damage from the mace, but it also does come with that reduced accuracy, uh, which means that 
it's going to be more likely to hit lower uh, instead of higher. Uh, and that's just consequence. Uh, the scepter right here, uh, plus 20, plus 60. This, again, was just make this more effective as a weapon, um, especially early on. Multipliers are very powerful when you have a large value that you're multiplying, but when you have a weak value, uh, they don't do very much. We'll talk about that when we get to the uh, the magic missile weapon. But right here, additives uh, are very strong early and they become weaker over time when the stat that they're working off of, for example, uh, this is taking the minimum of one of your stats and then the maximum of one of your of the the same set of stats, right, for the scepter. So, you know, whatever your water stat is. Uh, very early on, that's going to be fairly low. Later in the game, that's going to be relatively high. This plus 20 is going to matter a lot early and not m very much late. So that's kind of how that works. Um, club is pretty much the same. I might tweak this a little bit, uh, depending upon how things go. Uh, the chain, I decided, uh, it, this pairs with another weapon that uses the same concept. I don't remember which one is off the top of my head. We'll get to it. Uh, but the chain scales on the low end with your dexterity, but on the higher end, it also adds your strength. So this kind of gives it, it's more consistent on a dex character, but the more both of them you have, the stronger it is. Uh, so I, I kind of went with that functionality for the chain, and there's another weapon that we'll get to where I kind of swap these where it's strength uh, on the low end and then adds dexterity on the high end. So just to add a little bit of different play to it. Uh, the energy sword... Uh, is one that I've taken a little bit of time to, to kind of get to. So this is a little bit more complicated. You see the MRG right here? This is your mana regenerate. Uh, so the low end of this weapon is your maximum MP times 0.5 plus your mana regenerate. Uh, and then this max zero here is just if for some reason your mana regen rate is like negative one, so that means you're, it would be negative 100%. Uh, that would make this a negative number, and I, I want it to, to clamp at zero. Uh, so if it goes negative, it will be zero instead. So that's what's going on with this math.max here. Uh, and then just a plus 10 here on both of these just to give a little bit more uh, stuff going on with it. Uh, but the, the idea here is that if you have more mana regen, then you get more damage out of the energy sword. And that's true for both the low and high end. Uh, this one is using a 1 plus the mana regen instead of a 0.5. So it's going to deal damage more approximate to your maximum MP. Um, I might need to tweak some of these values a little bit. Just I'll have to see again how things play out when, when you actually play it. Uh, if you get fairly high maximum MP, obviously this is a powerful weapon. This weapon scales with equipment that you might be wearing. Uh, you can certainly equip your character to be a bit more maximum MP focused. Um... So it works well that way. Also, the critical only is a one times multiplier, but it steals MP. Um, up to 25% of your max MP uh, can be stolen from the enemy. It is capped, uh, as you can see in the comment right here. It steals MP equal to 25% of your max MP, uh, which is, it, it doesn't actually say, should, I'll go ahead and change that to say max. Uh, max MP. Uh, it is capped by the enemy's current MP. So it cannot steal more MP than the enemy currently has, uh, which is what this um, this minimum here is. So it'll take whichever is lesser of 25% of your maximum MP, or 0.25 times your maximum MP, and the enemy's current MP levels. Uh, it'll take whichever is lesser of that, uh, and then just kind of round it, um, because this may not turn out to be a whole number. Um, and it will make the enemy lose that amount of MP and it will give you that amount of MP. So that's what's going on with the energy sword. Uh, here we just have the pipe. That's the same. Slingshot. Uh, so the idea with the slingshot is it's a very accurate weapon. If we go over to this, uh, we will see slingshot accuracy plus 100%. So if we look at this, yeah, I've actually put a 1.5 multiplier on here to represent the fact that this actually deals increased damage. Uh, yeah, there's the nice comment. Thanks, thanks, uh, Google Sheets. Um, but there's a nice comment about the uh, the energy swords critical. But the way that this guy works, uh, if we go back over here to the math, is it just takes your strength and then two times your strength. So it works fairly similarly to some of the other weapons, um, but it has the added property of because of high accuracy, it kind of functions as like 1.5 your strength and three times your strength on average. Uh, here we see the shotgun. Uh, it Again, it compares your strength to the enemy's strength. 
uh, to modify its raw values. Rifle, I've now done that with dexterity. I have lowered the uh, min on the rifle a little bit. It was 40. I dropped it to 30 just to weaken it a little bit. It does get a better crit, and it has higher accuracy, so this kind of is artificial in some ways. Uh, there's a chainsaw. That's pretty standard. Magic missile, um, I have tweaked it to do two times the level instead of just plus the level. Uh, this weapon, I'm doing something very intentional with. It sucks early game. Uh, it just it just does. Uh, so if you look right here, its average is 17 at sort of these like approximate level one stats that I kind of am testing things or not testing things at, but kind of like tweaking my values at. These are not representative of any particular character, but you can see that this is a really crappy weapon <laughs> at at level one. But as soon as you get up to like level 99. Uh, its damage jumps way up just because of your level, and if you have, say, 200, what is this one set to right now, fire, you can see it goes way up in damage. So its its damage potential is dramatically higher um, through leveling, and this actually puts it in very good contention. So if I go through and I just make all of these caster values uh, 200 so we can compare them, you can see the scepter is at 240 for its average, whereas the magic missile is up to 299. Uh, those are the kind of direct comparison. You could also compare it to the staff. The staff is still more powerful, but it's two-handed. Um, and it doesn't crit as often. Whereas the magic missile has a higher than average crit rate. Um, or no. the Excuse me, I was looking at the chainsaw. The, the magic missile has a 10% chance to inflict rage and does not lower your crit rate. Uh, it's also a bit faster. So the staff, you can see, has a 3 attack speed. This is a 15. Uh, the scepter also has a 15. Um, and you can see the tome is the most powerful here at 434, uh, compared to the staff, but it has some nice properties, like it has a chance for magic reflection, has slightly better crit value, or has a decent crit value, the staff is a little bit better, um, but the staff is a single element, which means that this one is, like, it say, um, I had 100 water instead, you'll notice that it goes down to about staff level. So staff is generally going to be a little bit more powerful uh, than the the tome, just because your stats are probably not going to be exactly even. Uh, but a tome that matches your stats, and if you're kind of doing your rings and everything right, or, or whatever else you might be having going on, the tome might be better. So there's some nuance to what's going on there. But in general, the idea is the magic missile competes very well uh, at a high level, especially since it's a single-handed weapon. Um, and single element, so it only is relying on one of your elements, so you can get the magic missile for your strongest element uh, to kind of try to optimize your just raw damage. Um, and that is an important feature of the, the magic missile. So it's intentional that that weapon is very weak early on uh, and becomes much more powerful as you level and because it multiplies off of your level. Um, and this is where the multiplier really kind of comes in. So... Um, Stunrod. Stunrod is the other one that I made, uh, like the chain, uh, except this one is on strength instead of dexterity. Uh, that's, that's really all we need to say about this one. Katana has not changed. It does kind of its standard thing. Uh, I have buffed the tome. This used to be divided by, uh, and then no multiplier here. So this used to be divided by 2 instead of divided by 1.5. And this used to just be be flat. I buffed it a bit to divide by 1.5 and multiply by 1.5 just to increase its its potential for damage. Uh, I wanted the tome to be a bit stronger. Again, I wanted a lot of the caster weapons to be a bit stronger. Um, the scythe here is got a lot of math going on. Uh, the basic idea is, so you got some base number, and then you have this 0.5 times something. This 0.5 is the minimum between your strength and dexterity or the maximum between your strength and dexterity, depending upon whether it's the min value or the max value. So I wanted to get a little bit of your strength and dexterity into this, but I didn't want it to be the same way that the other ones had been because uh, I have a lot of like averages or things like that. Uh, so this includes a little bit, and then it also does the same thing with your earth and wind. This has additional multiplier, and I'll get to that in just a moment. But the earth and wind are the life stats. The scythe is connected to life. So uh, the better your life stats are, the more damage it will deal, um, obviously. But it doesn't really care which one's your best one and which one's your worst one. Your worst one is just going to decrease the damage or be on the min end, and the, the best one's going to be on the upper end. So um, we take half of your uh, strength or dex stat. Uh, 
so this relies much more on your earth and wind stat. Now you see this multiplier thing going on here. There is a comment here that kind of describes what's going on. But we have two minus your HP rate. HP rate is your percentage of HP in uh, zero to one range. So if you're at 100% HP, this is one. If you're at zero HP, this is zero. Um, which you can see that's described right over here. So at full damage, you just have this, or at full HP, you just have this added on. Uh, at half HP, uh, this is going to be minus 0.5, so it's going to be 1.5, so it's going to increase the amount of damage this deals. Uh, over here is a little bit more complicated, so you can see I've stored the HP rate in the I variable. This is just to make it a bit shorter to write and a bit easier to process. So this is technically a, um, a linear interpolation between 1 and 4, uh, but this end is just one times the thing. Because the, the, the way linear interpolation works is you have, on the one side, you have one and then a zero. So the, the classic linear interpolation would look something kind of like, uh, uh, let's see, um, initial value times I, no. Yeah, times one minus I plus uh, final value times I. So something like this. Uh, where i equals 0 is on the interval 0 to 1, like this. So the the basic idea here is, this is this is the basic idea of a learner interp interpolation. Um, so you'd have some value that's like 0. This is your 0 value. So if i is 0, then this is a 1. So you have 1 times that plus, well, i is 0, so this is nothing. If you have 0. 0.5, then you have half of that plus half of that. Uh, and so on and so forth. So this will scale smoothly from one to the other as zero as i goes from zero to one. And if i is one, then one minus one is zero. So the initial value is completely canceled out, and the final value of uh, one times that final value then keeps the final value. Uh, so that's the basic idea of an, a linear interpolation. Um, which I th what is it? Is it like slurp? I don't know. There's the lerp. Lerp for linear interpolation, uh, I believe, is what you'll see it get called in, in certain math libraries and stuff like that. But um, I want to scale from 100% is 1. So th there's technically an invisible 1 times i here because this is the upper end. The 0 end is the 4. So if you're very low on HP, this, this multiplier goes way up. Obviously, you're not going to get to 4 because you can't have 0 HP without and still being able to use your weapon. You're, you're dead at that point. So... Um, but if you get very low on HP, where this is like a 0.01 or whatever, it's going to be like, ah, oh, you get a little bit here, and you get a lot here, and so that's going to increase the damage. This works really well with the scythe as well, because on critical hits will cause you to gain damage. You deal more damage when you're lower at HP, but if you land a critical hit, you're able to gain more HP back. Um, so that's kind of the, the play that I wanted for this. That's what's going on here with the scythe, uh, and again, it, it relies on your life stat. Don't know how good it's going to be. Again, all of this stuff is just like, I have now gotten everything to a preliminary place that I can can begin tweaking it from. Uh, and I do know everything's going to have to be tweaked. We'll talk about the need for tweaking in a moment. Uh, just looking down at the time there. Um, so, Scimitar is kind of where we left it last time. So, that's covered all of the weapons now. Uh, so that's all of those modifications to the the weapons. Uh, however, there's something else that I noticed was kind of important. And so I've added a thing over here to AC modifications. With all of these changes to weapons, the default way, so this is modifying that, but the default way that we would, uh, when you'd go to the weapon merchant and it would display uh, properties about weapons would be some sort of number off to the side, and I believe that would just take the attack stat, which for me is strength. Most of my weapons don't add to your strength, um, because I don't want to add values that the weapon scales off of, if that makes sense. So, um, like, if it's an elemental weapon, it will do things, but for the most part, uh, like, yeah, so... Adding raw strength is not something that weapons are generally going to deal. That display was completely useless for determining if the weapon would be better. Now, if you looked at a weapon uh, in that uh, that display, it would indicate who could use it, and it would demonstrate the damage values for the first character, but it wouldn't give you any idea for any of the other characters. So, 
Uh, what most of this code does, uh, right here, I, I figured out which function draws the information about weapons uh, or about equipment and which one's better. And if it's parameter ID 2 uh, off of this function right here, this checks the weapon or it checks the item to see if it's a weapon or an armor. Uh, so right here you can see a comment declaring that that's what that does. Uh, so if it's a weapon, I A and B are really important because those are for the damage evalu evaluations. Uh, so these variables are going to be seen inside of these evals. What this does is this processes the code for the damage min and damage max, which goes into these functions over here. So uh, that gives me the actor so I can look. I need A and B because things like the shotgun, uh, for example. Uh, grab the A and B. That's not a problem in the spot over here. If I go weapons and I go to, say, the standard issue shotgun, you'll notice I just pass A and A to it for the value here. But here I have A and B, and this is the thing that's getting processed, so I need both of those over here. Um, and so... I uh, do a bunch of math. I do a bunch of stuff here. I check uh, what the average is. So, um, and I get the old values. If you're not equipped with a weapon, then old values will all be zero. Um, technically, this should probably be um, your unarmed weapon damage. Should probably be your unarmed weapon damage. Uh, but for that, I'd need to check what the unarmed this is not the f area where that's going to be it's going to be actually at the top of this file um if you are unarmed hang on uh, this is one of those things that i just kind of thought about yeah okay your damage low is your uh, your attack so it's your strength times 0.5 to your strength times 0.75 um that's your unarmed damage so i'll modify this right now to uh, math dot around uh, zero point two five times uh, a dot stir. I don't need a second copy of that. Um, now this is seven five. We don't need to actually look to figure out which one this is. We know that it's just point five strength. I can get rid of these extra semicolons. Uh, this one technically does not need to be math that rounded, but I'm rounding the averages anyway, so I'll keep it that way. Uh, I mean, you just know that, right? You're adding 25% of your strength with 75% of your strength to get 100% of your strength, dividing by 2 to get 50% of your strength, so that's 0.5. Um, so I'll just do that, so that way that's actually representative of what your initial value is. Uh, if the item exists, then of course we're just going to go ahead and get the proper values. Um, but this right here, this function changes whether or not the text color is red or green. Green indicates it's better. Red indicates it's worse, where the numbers are... The average is... Well, basically, if it's negative, uh, if the difference between the, the new average and the old average is negative, i.e. the new one would be worse than the old one, then it's red. Uh, and if the new average is... Uh, if that's positive, then it will become green. Um, and then I just fill out... Like, I get the change the change in the minimum the change in the maximum uh and i fill out some stuff what this right here does uh this little bit is this says hey if it's a positive number make there be a plus sign in front of it negative numbers will automatically have a negative sign in front of them that's how negative numbers work but if it's a positive number it will not automatically get a positive sign so we want to make sure that we include ones that way we're indicating hey it's going up by this amount uh, it's not showing what the new value would be it's showing what the the increase or decrease would be now one of the things that's a consequence of this that is a subtlety is if you have a higher average, one or one or the other of your stats could be worse. Um, so there's a couple of ways that average could be better. The upper end of your wep of the new weapon could be much higher, uh, which raises the average up, while the low end could be lower. So you could have a negative some amount uh, and then a positive some amount. The positive some amount is just going to be much higher positive. Uh, and that's going to push the whole average, but you can have a green negative is, is all I'm saying there. Uh, armor, I don't really have a good way of comparing armors because the effects are so varied. Uh, so all I'm doing right now is just displaying text to further emphasize whether or not their character can equip the armor or not. Uh, and that's all I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and show you what this looks like in game now uh, after kind of explaining all of that because I think it's useful to look at the code, but I think it's also very useful to see what it looks like in action. Um... Uh, 
I'm going to turn off that back in music because this is coming on. Uh, I don't know where I left these characters. Okay, I left them over here. So we're just going to walk down to the middle. Oh, great. I'm poisoned. Uh, let me just take a moment to hear that so we don't have the screen flashing on us indicating poison. Um, I've been doing some playtesting for other reasons. So if we go here, you can now see over here, Francis is already wielding a rusty dagger. There's no actual change in terms of the damage. However, the accuracy multiplier that you get is technically adjusting this. I could go into it to kind of indicate, oh, this would actually be better. Um, but you can see, like, the sword, it would theoretically be worse than the sword. Technically, it'd be better. If it doesn't display a thing for a character, that character can't equip it. Uh, you can see how much better this sword would be than the rusty dagger. But it's just going to be that way for any, any uh, dagger. And you can see it doesn't favorably compared to the rusty sword. I probably could take accuracy into it um, and how that affects your accuracy, but I honestly, I, I, I don't think I want to worry about it. Um, at least not right now. That might be possible later. Yeah, right here you can see the flail is just... It is better on the upper end. It's just way lower on the lower end than the, the sword is. So if you look at the sword uh, on Sir Lionel, that's 82 to 109, 36 to 144. So... Uh, it's a, a big range. The axe is clearly very good, though. And here you can see some negatives be uh, green. Uh, so I can go through all of these, and we can see sort of what their damage values are. Um, the rusty sword is not the most exciting of weapons, and some characters definitely prefer some things more than others. Uh, Devin McElroy would really like this chain <laughs> way more than that pipe. You can see how terrible that pipe is. Uh, when 54 to 96 is a decided improvement. Uh, over it, over that old pipe. Um, now that there's some other properties with it too. Uh, interestingly enough, the mana blade for for Francis is a bit of an improvement over the dagger theoretically, but remember that the dagger hits twice, uh, so that's going to affect the relative gains. Uh, you can see the steel pipe here uh, is not terribly impressive, um, but the regularity of critical hits is really good. It's just, I mean, pipes are not meant to be the best weapon. Simple slingshot has some pros and cons um shotgun obviously is going to have a very good showing uh military rifle doesn't look as impressive but is a three round burst uh the chainsaw here is going to be very good looking uh firebolt's going to look awful um sunrod is yeah, I mean, various characters are going to appreciate it different ways ton is pretty good and so on and so forth so you get the idea of what that looks like um and then if you look over here it's just like Oh, if they can't equip it, it doesn't say that they can equip it. That's what's going on there. Um, so that's just kind of an, an overview of some of those things. Now we need to talk about... I'm going to go ahead and close that and turn this music back on. We need to talk about the big thing that I have been looking at. Because, I mean, I got this done, and this was really good to get figured out. And uh, maybe I'll add a note of... Um, to do consider um, adding math for the impact of accuracy but maybe not I don't know I'm not gonna worry about it at the moment uh, I'm gonna leave that as a thing okay so right over here we have character classes brainstorming this is not the most beautiful looking document but one of the things that I've been doing as I've been playtesting the game is I've been thinking a lot about sort of that initial experience and sort of the way of progression for things. And one of the things that I've come to realize is there's a fundamental flaw in the way that I have arranged a lot of my skills. The common skills are all great, um, relatively speaking. Like, I'm, I'm overall happy with the common skills, but they are fundamentally they don't necessarily connect. And I've talked about this previously, um, but what I've come to realize is I need a couple of things. One, I'm probably going to need to break this structure. So I had this very nice structure that I worked with. Where it's like, oh, you start off with uh, one common skill and one unique skill. And then uh, like you get one unique skill at each kind of level up point. And early on, you get more common skills. And then it drifts down until you only get unique skills. And it's this very beautiful. Um, the the Mel and me, for those who are familiar with the magic psychographics, uh, or it's not psychographics, it's aesthetics. The, the Mel and me who really appreciates the structure and the organization of it loves this. It's, it's beautiful, uh, it's, it's well organized, and it sucks because it's very rigid and it does not accommodate what I actually need very well. 
What I have come to realize that I absolutely need is I just need to get an idea of what is the fundamental core thrust of this character, what are they doing from level one? And those initial skills need to really reflect that, and I also want to be very, very careful about putting buff spells early. Some buff spells are going to be okay early if that's kind of what the character is about. But say the knight, for example, what are they fundamentally about? Well, they're the class conceit, because I've gone through and I've planned out class conceits, is protecting people. I need to make sure that one of these first two skills is about protecting allies. And I need to craft the knight character around that. So I need skills that say, hey, I protect allies. I need skills that say, hey, I benefit from protecting allies. Um, or I play into, I have synergy with protecting allies. So there are different ways that that can come out. One of the things that I want to do is figure out some setup, and I need to investigate this, um, but I want to figure out some setup for making an alternate version of the uh, substitute flag. Because right now, the substitute flag says, hey, anybody below 25% health, I'll take the hit for you. That's how substitute works, uh, as far as I understand that, that flag. So for those who do not know what I'm talking about, uh, just to quickly explain, uh, I can go to a state here. Um, where's, yeah, intercepting, right here. Special flag, substitute. So this substitute flag says, hey, anybody low on HP, go after me. Uh, you're, you're hitting me instead of the ally. There are different ways that I can accomplish this goal. Um, one of them is adjusting the target rate. So I can say, don't target that ally. I can make their target rate like zero. So enemies will not target that ally with single target spells. Um, that's just how that kind of works. Higher target rate means they're going to be prioritized in the AI targeting. So something like intercepting right here, this gives you the substitute flag, so you automatically take the hit for low, uh, for low health allies. But it also means that enemies are going to target you at a higher rate. So useful stuff. Um, but I can also I, I want to look at making some sort of substitute flag variant that says, "Hey, if you would target an ally with less health than me, you hit me instead." Uh, or if you do deal, deal damage. I need to look into that to see how feasible that is to do. Uh, but that's something that I want to look at as well. Um, that's going to require a bunch of digging and a bunch of research. But that's something that I'm that I'm at least thinking about right now. Um, so other things that I can do to play off of that is I can use skills that get better the lower your health is and things like that. Uh, stuff that intentionally plays into that. Now, interception is a skill that the knight gets early. It's probably going to have to be a level 1 skill. Because at least right now with the skills that I've, that I've provided... This is what the knight is about. The knight is about intercepting hits for allies. And then doing something with that. So um, that's something that I want to look at as well. Um, and I'm going to need to do that, this for, for all of the characters. I'm going to say, what are those first two skills telling you this character is about? And like I said, uh, buff skills kind of need to go a bit later. Because one of the other things that I found in playing is that, like, when I have three skills right here... Uh, like, Deep Breath is not a skill you're using every turn. This is a healing skill. Hone Weapon is a skill you use maybe once at the beginning of combat, and then you don't really use. And that's the problem with buff skills, right? Is you... They're, they're, they're useful, but setup is intrinsically uninteresting to a certain extent. Um, it can make for really interesting strategies, like in Pokemon, uh, setting up with, like, Dragon Dance, and, and when do you time doing your, your buffing up and things like that. Buffs can be really cool, and they can have a lot of play, but especially early when it's one of the only three things you can do, it makes your skilled options feel less exciting. Or it can, anyway. So, um, I want to think about, okay, what am I setting up? How are characters being set up? Um, in terms of what they do, how they present what they're about, and that sort of thing. And I want buffing to be something that's very distinct. Like, the teller is just terribly designed right now uh, in the sense that um, there are first, like, a bunch of skills. They get Meditate, which is better now, but still not amazing. Uh, and, I mean, it's it's better now. Um, before, it was absolute trash. Then they get Balance MP, which is about transferring MP around to allies, which is interesting, and maybe that one belongs there. I don't know. Uh, Siphon MP steals MP from enemies. Like, are they about manipulating MP? Um, maybe, maybe that's what the emphasis is going to be, but maybe something like Balance MP needs to go first then, and Meditate gets pushed back here, and that's okay. Um, and so that's part of what it need. What I need to do is I need to break the structure uh, where it makes sense and push some of these uh, 
common skills to different spots and things like that. So I've been doing a lot of thinking about, okay, how do I figure out what some of the core essence is and stuff like that. So that's where this document comes in. What I'm looking at is when you first start the character, what is their role? Like when, when you select the character, what are they about? And then the first set of levels is building on that. And then in mid game and late game, you can add stuff to that role. You can kind of expand it around a little bit. Um, so some of these later skills, uh, just to go back to the thing here. So basically like the skills that you get up to like this point sort of thing, uh, not exactly, but kind of roughly like these first set of skills or whatever, define what the character is about, or like really these skills define what the character is about. Uh, and, and some of this math I, I'm going to need to tweak with, but like the rough idea is like the first section of like really needs to establish this is what the character is about and have skills that hammer that, that home. And then you can begin fleshing out. Here's some other stuff that the character can do as well. Uh, so like for the example, the ranger keen eye is not going to go early. I'm probably going to switch it out for antidote and make the ranger like the first thing the ranger is about is, okay, you're doing poison. Now you're doing things that kind of uh, uh, apply to that and, and so on and so forth. Um, and so I'm going to have to go through all the characters, kind of figure some of this out. Uh, I'm probably going to move guard break way earlier on the special forces, for example. Uh, so anyway, that's just kind of an overview of, uh, of that. And it's going to be a process that I have, I've only just really begun. Uh, but I, I'm going to want to fill this thing out and really think through, okay. Uh, and the sage, I'm happy with where the sage is at right now, but the, all of these characters is going to be like, okay, what do they do? What are they about? What is their mechanical heart? And I need to emphasize that from level one. Uh, and I need to really, really, really think about that. And I need to plan it out in, in even more detail. And I need to be, uh, what's really important here, uh, is I need to be willing to break my beautiful structure uh, that I, I do quite like in order to be able to deliver on that uh, and deliver on that concept. So anyway, I think I have blathered on long enough, uh, gone over some of the details of what I've done, some of the details of what I'm thinking about and, and the direction that I'm needing to take things. Um, getting that early experience in a spot where I have a real sense for where like different parties and stuff are going to go, that's going to be really important to me um, as I begin building and fleshing things out. I'm also going to need to think about, okay, what is going to be the sort of path for getting equipment going to look like? Uh, and I'm going to need to plan that out as well. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here because I think I've kind of covered uh, a lot of this stuff in enough detail. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing if you want to see more about this or, you know, my Guild Wars VODs that keep going up. Uh, and, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, and until next time, everyone, take care. And goodbye.